Hello and welcome back everybody to another workshop for guardian training here. My name is Alexis. This is my channel, my blog, my project called Ascension Diaries. I've been doing this for uh, about seven years now and cultivating my abilities, my therapeutic background and my mediumship and I would say service to others mission on this planet into more clear and concise moments and opportunities for people to engage in my particular medicine, my particular creative offerings. So thank you for joining on patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries in the guardian training, the once a month workshops where I have, we have eight people with me I am as I'm recording this. So thank you guys. Thank you, Alex, Bridget, Grace, Jay, Joanne, uh, Emily, Rachel, those of you who are here, just a major shout out. And if you're watching the recording, please just go to the Patreon link I just mentioned and sign up or go into the little bio section of whatever, either my profile or underneath this video to see the link tree or the link that has all of my links within it, all of the resources and stuff to get in contact with me, to book sessions with me, to join these workshops, to join my Telegram 24 hour chat room and get involved in not only these themed lectures and uh, written work and somatic or body work sort of workshops that I want to do and give to humanity once a month, but also the space weather that occurs in between those days, between the, each of the 18ths and the all the other random things that I've noticed that is sort of ascension related or planetary evolution of consciousness related because that's what the diary is about that's what I'm tracking with this project me Alexis all of my own I've been doing this before I've met hundreds literally hundreds of amazing people who are also doing workshops who are also working to be speakers be teachers be leaders be guides do sweatshops, do sound baths, do again, lectures and tea shops and just jamming with instruments and drum circles and talk circles. And these sort of medicines in the physical world is what we're kind of bridging digitally with these workshops. Also in my own work and through these next few years, my goal is always to get into the physical, to be physically around people, to physically enjoy discussion and themes and healing and music and these sort of things. So this momentum with the Patreon has always been with that intention to build momentum, to get into physical contact with the soul family, with people who actually resonate with what I'm talking about. Because if you can imagine, as many of you have imagined, you've begun opening your consciousness to these concepts and these sort of understandings of how life works, the cosmic law, laws of nature, and speaking upon it and living within it. And you're realizing you're having to push back against the system. You're having to push back against oppressive family members, people who should be supporting you and, and um, people who are elders in your life. Also people who are clearly older than you, who've gone through more parts of life. They're also struggling to uh, understand, hold space for us up and coming youth as well, who are spiritually activated, who are their wanderer selves, who are activating these codes in order to keep our planet healthy, in order for those truths to be firmly known, firmly reverberated. And the truths that I bring every month is that sort of boldness that I'm sort of politely and also without, I want to say, disarming myself to approach, approach the public forum, give my codes also, and then you do with them what you must, but they are coming from a place of love and they're coming from a place of good intention for service to others and for uplifting humanity, for literally accessing and opening frequencies that don't get brought into popular culture. They aren't being talked about as cute as popular culture has been getting with trying to be more active, more conscious, they are, we're still here to push. We're still here to push the bar. We're still here to lead the culture where I'm here to produce 
culturally acceptable themes and activities for myself and for the next just seven generations, which digitally will, we'll, we will see how long these digital pieces are going to last. But I encourage you to make physical pieces, like I said, memories, even like even making a festival that people remember for the rest of their lives. That is a real piece of artwork that is sustaining. That is a real mark in the archetype and the architecture of our world. And so I just want to encourage that. And people feel like they need to be lucky or that people who do these things are lucky. And that's why I'm bringing luck into today's discussion, into today's workshop, because I want people to feel lucky enough in their world, in their reality to fall into place where they are naturally meant to be and do what they love instead of doing a job. Do what they love instead of policing others. Doing what they love instead of doing black magic. You know what I'm saying? There is a lot and I'm not, I am and I'm not a naive person. I'm a unique human being, just like all of you. I have a lot of naivety because I was not raised in any sort of occult. I would say out of the classic cultural 90s, Western North America culture, culture, I wasn't raised with any sort of hidden occultism or some sort of different class or religion <clears throat> influences. I went to public schooling except for a brief stint in Catholic schooling in elementary school. And I learned of these more, I would say the, um, oh, what's the word that they use? when there is a smaller population of people, they aren't like the main population, but they're like the, they're like a side population or a smaller population. And there's, there's like acts of prejudice against these groups and so on. And there's this like discourse about things being unfair and that there is these classes and that there is these separations. And there really is these separations. Thanks for helping me with the words, but it's, you're, we're close, but it's like, you're in the, it starts with an M and it's like, you're in this class. You're not in like the main class. You're in the, I want to say it's like minimal or like some sort of dumb word that's not coming to mind, but <clears throat> it's like, you're not in the, the biggest population, but you're in one of the like lesser, but still significant populations of groups. And these sort of groups all have their rules, all have their, they have these structures, the minority, thank you, the minority groups. So these groups they've used to kind of hide themselves, these minority groups where there's all this magic and there's all this harvesting of energy. There's all this hierarchies, there's brotherhoods, there's sisterhoods, there's, there's veiled things, there's lies, there's secrets, there's, there's a lot of darkness and there's a lot of pain and suffering and intergenerational trauma. And that is real. And it's really been coming up a lot in the last month since I've seen you last. And I've been doing themes about sexual, uh, sexual uh, healing and <clears throat> protection. And guess what? I've been doing these because it is part of our lower chakras and you got to work your bottom up. And with the workshops, I wanted to at least start properly and do themes kind of from the bottom up making sure that we have a good foundation and then see what bubbles up out of that because <laughs> that's also how luck works. And so we're moving now into, like I was saying, the heart chakra, we're moving into the upper chakras now. And that's when luck and these sort of things come to mind because no matter what, no matter how dark, no matter how like I want to cuss, but like how messed up your background is, your family is, your culture is, the laws that you were raised in to think that they were real. It doesn't matter because there is cosmic law. There is laws of the universe, the laws of nature that trump all of that and constantly get in the way of the lesser law, the lesser control structure, the rest, the lesser soul service to self 
making sure that everybody obeys so your lies and your cheats and your desires are met, like coercing and coercing the reality to give you what you want. And that is not how I've ever been. I've been able to bounce over Mm -hmm. all these, these minority cultures all over the majority cultures, but I've been able to taste a lot of it because they've been on the internet and in this age of information since basically since I went to that Catholic school, since you know, third grade, I was looking up fractal geometry GIFs, GIFs online and Google images. But the fact that the internet, that Google exists, that these, that Microsoft exists, that my school existed, that I, that my, the neighborhood, the city that I was in existed, the country that, that existed. still working on the remote, buddy. So just give me some. That I was in all these structures that I was in and being coerced, I was just lucky enough and in the divine flow in a way to just bounce right through it. Always finding the, always finding the silver lining, always being guided through with true joy, with true magic, because that's the frequency that I was holding. And that's what I would meet in my hologram, despite being immersed in a place of dark magic, in a place of coerced outcomes, in a place of planned and meticulously emotionally guarded and directed towards. And these emotional blocks and this this force, these force narratives and these doctrines of like holding the spirit in and trying to uh, like hold it all in and try and get what you want out of life. But you can do all of that and it'll blow up in your face if it's not meant to happen. If you cannot match the frequency, <laughs> it's okay. If I, if you cannot match the frequency of what it is that you're trying to manifest. So most of you already know that most of you have manifested things Most of you realize that you have to be in a really good mood and uh, in life so you don't have crappy things coming to meet you. So if you don't want to leave the house, if you're in a crappy mood because uh, because you know crappy things are going to happen to you, things are going to be attracted to you that suck. (laughs) So when it comes to luck, we are here to meet the themes and I'll be funny because it really went viral, I would say, in social media this the statement about luck how it's preparation meeting opportunity that luck is preparation meeting opportunity but what is the preparation this dark magic these more occult these more structural locked into stone buildings and locked into these uh geometries forever you're really just getting the same energy bouncing back to you over and over. You've created a circuit, you've created a machine and it's, you know, there is still divine intervention that can like influence that. You could get struck by lightning, but you are making this structure produce what you want. All of these computers, all of these motherboards, they're even the social controllers, the even shepherds are trying to control and make a certain container produce what they want it to produce. And, you know, preparation is so much more than just the masculine logistical putting things in a box sort of experience. And I think that's kind of what the divine feminine is coming back to teach. And I believe that the dark divine feminine knew all of this. And that was how we were coercing the brotherhood was through the divine feminine awareness that this structural energy, this logical energy needs a goal, a container. It needs something. It needs guidance. It needs to serve something. And that service to others, where does it go? And you can either go in the direction of serving one dark truth or one sort of doctrine that makes you trim your edges and not grow as like a free and wild tree, but as specific growth and like it's like you're in a an orchard that's made to produce fruit at the most at the most efficient way and if you drive past those orchards you see how those trees are tied down and 
none of their limbs, like not a single sprout off their, of their limb is wasted. Like they're watching every sprout and every limb of every tree to make sure that they're getting the maximum amount of harvest out of their trees, out of those trees that are choosing to live there, who are choosing to be groomed by this, this preparation <laughs> and being promised opportunity in a more more structured way like if you work for a company for five years you're promised the opportunity to get a raise these sort of things so there's ways to coerce us and kind of give our power away to try and get lucky in life or try and get the payoff in life that we want but i feel like i'm carrying the codes of true luck of true spontaneous mir miraculous opportunity that does not require you to stuff away your energy, not require you to wait, not require you to pine after something, not require you to stifle your inner child, I want to say. Also silence your inner child and its impulses to live. Because if you do that, then you become a corrupted soul. You die. You know, your inner child is your life. It is your life force. So we got to keep the inner child alive. And so what kind of preparation do we need to give that inner child to manifest true luck, to manifest true opportunity for themselves in this vibration that matches their heightened state of hope, of bliss, of connection, of faith, of love, of communal optimism. These are the codes I want to bring in. So let's talk about this. So repeat after me for this one. I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky. Now there's people who will literally say to your face, you can't manifest that. You can't do that. You know, that can't happen. They will tell you, you can't do something to your face in a literal reality that can manifest anything. Literally anything can manifest out of this reality. And we are coming to the awareness that not only are we all telepathic to each other already, and the more pe we interact with people, we will feel them, co-manifest with them, and co-create miracles with them. This is real. So if someone's telling you, you can't do something, you can just tell them I'm really lucky. And there's nothing they can really say about that. There's really nothing. There's, in my opinion, there's no clever response other than like, we'll see, you know, or maybe. And that's a good response to anything. When anyone's trying to get in your face, like telling you they're really lucky and they're going to manifest this, but your whole body is going, absolutely not, homie. Ew. Like, ooh, that doesn't feel good at all. So that's when you say, we'll see. Because again, <clears throat> as powerful and all powerful as people want to make themselves believe they are, there is a cascade of the cosmic law and the laws of nature that are acting through us all. And we are here to learn from other people and people we doubt, especially. That's usually someone we're here to learn from. And we're also here to learn from people who are extremely arrogant and who will make mistakes at the cost and they will do things at the cost of other people because they've lost their ability to be with the tribe. They have gone into a state of what some say is narcissistic or extreme levels of unprocessed abuse. And they will begin lashing out at the tribe or collective thinking their mission and their luck is more or greater or more, I would say, or clearer or anointed versus other people's luck. And for sometimes that is in case, that is the case. And the energy that comes off that person will either feel really nasty when they go off and do that, or it'll feel like a, like an aha moment. Like, wow, this person's actually accessing a frequency of joy, bliss, opportunity, you know, synchronicity. Uh, it feel, it'll feel like the clouds will open up over the person. It will feel like liberation is happening, not only for them in that moment, 
where they are accessing this feelings of luck and opportunity coming to them. And you will feel liberated by that. You will feel luck and opportunity coming through. And you and maybe the entire tribe around you that you trust will feel that feeling. That's what we're going for. So you can go both ways. Like I said, with this information, you can, you'll be like, I feel really lucky. And I feel like this is going to work out. And still people around you are the judge, jury, judge, jury, and executioner of this shared hologram we are experiencing. And if they look at you and they're like, that doesn't feel right. You know, you either are going to get incredibly lucky and show and teach all these people by staying humble, by staying in alignment, or you're going to start pushing back and start trying to control and start trying to do service to self and make this thing happen out of spite. And it could blow up in your face either by losing all of those people and your friends in your life. It could blow up in your face where it maybe is successful, but it's the last time you sent feel success and it's empty because there's no one to enjoy it with these sort of things. Now, before we get going, and when I want you to keep saying to yourself, I'm really lucky, I am really lucky, I am luck, I am luck, I want you to also consider something that is, those of you who do and were already in, already integrated into, I want to say the dark side of Hollywood and the witchcraft of movie making and how they use psychology to basically coerce our minds into creating architecture for our consciousness to be imprisoned into basically like, but if you can dance around movies and you consume movies, people who are deeper into that karma are making movies now to try and alleviate the dark magic, alleviate the crap. And there is a character in Deadpool too that is lucky. Her superpower is luck. And in that movie, they are literally rescuing children from abusers in an orphanage and like real, and it is violent and it is vulgar, but it is sort of this bizarre state of society that we we are in, that we're trying to relieve this pressure this extreme level of darkness that's been implanted subconsciously into a lot of us in order to hurt us deeper in the future, in order to farm off of us. And enough people who have had enough incarnations, I assume, were watching, witnessing, experiencing, and then just like processing it out with their immune system, just like digesting it and crapping it out. Like, thank you so much. And here and off with the waste and I'm taking the power and the energy from that experience. And I'm going to create new momentum. I'm going to prepare the future generations to be aware and weary of these behavioral patterns of these falls from grace. What do they look like? What do they feel like? What do they, what, how do they proceed? People are making books. People are making YouTube videos. People are making podcasts. People are making, workshops, like I said, raves, festivals, people are making rock gardens to manifest this better timeline, these newer codes to process all the darkness they've experienced and make better, make the nectar out of it better for the next generations with all the data that they need to know to solidify themselves against from these weaknesses of human behavior but to also instill with them the knowledge that there is this luck, there is this magic of good, there is this spontaneity of the universe conspiring in their favor and that they are lucky, that they are luck and how to search for it, how to manifest it more. And that's what I'm here to instill now more is <clears throat> before I get going too quickly, it's just using your external environment to see the feedback of how lucky you really are. So you could say, I am really lucky. And then you can just turn your head and look out into your yard, look out into the nature, wherever that is for you. Look out your window into that space and something will fly through your field of vision, a bird, a bug, a shooting star, or it could be even something more than that. It could be literally like a bear. It could be a entire gust of wind 
for me, it was an entire small tornado that happened to me the other day. And I had never seen like living in the plains in the tundra, we see these, the wind act up and I've been in wide open lands, but I've never seen a mini tornado like the, what I saw the other day when I was again, accessing higher frequencies of faith, hope, love of having trust in the luck that I have experienced so far in my life. And that will continue to surprise me and, and create laughter out of me and my response. And in and that is the pleasurable experience of life. Why I'm worthy of being given good luck is because of the laughter that comes produces out of me when I'm feeling just so totally spontaneously supported and conversed with and engaged with by my reality, by my outside experience, my outside projection that my inside projection didn't expect. So this tornado that formed in my yard and then promptly like talked to me, I feel like consciously, like there was some sort of being there creating this tornado, this, this, the, you know, the, the elementals potentially of nature, these laws of nature coming to look at me, showing me that their power is right there and that they choose not to exercise it over us because we are in a way the students here, we're relearning, we're reintegrating. I shouldn't be shocked to see that tornado and not, and I shouldn't be not sure about what I'm looking at, but I am trying to reintegrate that aspect of self that is pure magic, that is pure nature, that is happening not to me, but with me and holding that gratitude, holding that gratitude that I am in this constant conversation that I'm even in moments of boredom that I can still just turn around, look outside, spend some time in nature and allow me to not be the center of the universe. See, listen, listen to the birds and see what's going to happen. You might step on a cactus thorn. Excellent. You're getting some DNA codes from the universe and it's going right into your bloodstream. I, I stepped on a piece of glass right before this. We keep breaking glass in our house. And that's also a sign of luck, great luck and great energetic change. Whenever you notice like a boom of thunder or something like that, that's also a moment where the energies are getting shifted right away to shift your luck also. And so when it comes to Building momentum now of luck because you and me, we let's just conjure up a moment right now in our memory of a time where we felt like we really got super lucky. Because you and I, we know we, you've probably been thinking about it since you knew the theme was going to be luck. Let's think about a time where we felt super, super lucky that some, it worked out in our favor. Something worked out in our favor. It shouldn't have, it, it, it took a lot of cooperation, even and collab and miracles, but you got lucky. And you felt lucky. You felt like it really worked out in your favor. Let's conjure that time. And I want you to tap your heart chakra while you're thinking about it and just like feel that bliss. Feel that bliss of that time of luck and feel a smile on your face. Like, yeah, like I did it. Like, yes, that worked out for me. Yes, I feel so lucky. Tap, tap your cheeks, tap your cheeks. Feel your cheeks filled up with luck, filled with that feeling of luck. Congratulations. Yeah, it did work out for you in that moment. Even if it's just a little one, like, ooh, there was a piece of cake left. Yes, like so lucky. So pat your chest, pat your, pat your heart. I want, we, I want us to build this memory, rebuild this and just know like next time you feel like you're gonna, like something worked out in your favor and you got lucky, I want you to tap your heart and just smile with gratitude. Just be like, yeah, I'm super lucky. I'm lucky. Like there's luck again. Luck is here for me. Luck is always here for me. Luck is always here to show me the magic of being authentic, being in the moment, being service to others, being honest, being hopeful, being blissful, being the fool, almost approaching life with that sort of foolish beginner's luck and approaching every day with that beginner's luck. That was a big theme also that came in. If you are not studying tarot or if you would be considered to study the tarot, it's just a, a whole bunch of archetypes put in a, into a bunch of pictures. So you just need to know the archetype per picture 
The fool card is the zero point. It's the beginning point. It's the place where the most luck in a way can, can, can happen to you because you have the least amount of things going for you. So you're the most available. This is how I understand it. Anyways, you're the most available to good fortune and good luck and new opportunities because you've made yourself untethered. You're at that zero point. You're open to it. And sometimes we access this moment of the fool in very short stints of time. Those of us who have families, those of us who have a lot of responsibilities, who've built a lot of momentum in our life, to have that zero point moment again is a more fleeting experience, I would say, but it still happens. We are all of a sudden alone. You're all of a sudden have no responsibilities. You all of a sudden are kind of being like knocked on your ass. Everything you expected to be a certain way didn't work out. You're having that moment of surrender. That's that fool moment. That's that moment where luck can be on your side. So we're accessing that rawness right now, that access point, that doorway. So let's just think about that feeling right now. Let's just feel it. I hope you're feeling it opening up in your chest. I'm feeling like this opening over my chest. So this like opening here, this nice big ball of energy, this moment of potential, this moment of potential. So let's see, what are we going to add to this moment? Ah, yes, the next note. So the moment is saying... Your wins are our wins. So let's win. Okay. Your wins are our wins. So let's win. Now, this is the case, again, when you're coming from that frequency of service to others, innocence, I want to say naivety, not with any sort of structural background, like you're just a clean slate, all of your genetic blah, 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 all of those expectations on you because of your bloodline, just get rid of it. You are born fresh and clean. The fact that you were born on this earth and that you were able to make or shower yourself again, you know, baptize yourself over and over with water and be born again, be born again, be born again with release, ask, do forgiveness exercises, forgive, say you're sorry, say the things you want to do to improve yourself, be there, show up, give back. All the wins are, are all the wins. You know, it's a win to have someone apologize to you when they hurt you. And it's a win that when you stand up for when someone hurts you, that they apologize and that you're able to reconcile and keep team working. It's a win that we have teamwork. It's a win that the human consciousness and the human attention is on you ever at all. It's a win that human attention and cooperation exists and creates our world on a daily basis. That is a win and it is all of our wins. Now, people who are service to self, their win to them is not everybody's win. <laughs> if and everybody's win, I should say more, it's actually the opposite, I would say more, is anyone else's win is not considered that narcissist or this service to self person's win. They don't consider that their mutual win. There is no mutual empathetic sort of bliss or joy out of that. And that's sort of who we got to look after and who these codes are for are, are for, for also is like, Look at the people who can't see or get any bliss out of other people's winning. Other sweet, innocent, talented, you know, precious, clearly service to others, clearly on the path of learning, growing, the fool in a way, seeing their wins, celebrating their wins with them. That's true integration of what luck is also, in my opinion. It's when you show up to life and what you receive from showing up to life, what it brings back to you, you take that in, you work with that and you produce solutions, you you seek out solutions, you seek out words and statements and therapeutics and the peace pipe and all of these things, your ancestral memories of drum circles and talk circles and all of these ways to create harmony and peace and make the wins everyone's wins. 
bring us back to that state where we we do want homey over here in the part of the circle or around the bonfire that you see regularly <laughs> to have a win and their win they're going to tell you about it because what's deep within their win it's more opportunities to see how luck works out for people more opportunities to see how faith works out for people to blow your own mind with how the miracles of life are overflowing through those of us who are still trying, who are still showing up, who are still service to others, who are still watching everything expand and get more serious and intense, but still show up with a smile and still work to see if they can keep up with the pressure of, of the demands of the group and of the demands of the wins and the losses of the group. So me personally, what I'm bringing to this group in this tribe, and if we were physically sitting in a circle and I was talking <laughs> about whatever was concerning us or whatever win was happening, me, what my natural state is and that I'm here to share or remind you about is a state of a cheerleader, is a state of cheerleading on the soul family, cheerleading on your wins, cheerleading on your innovations, cheerleading on your losses, even cheerleading on your mistakes, because I'm proud of you for claiming those and seeing the lesson and not only having the humility and lack of major pride or distortion to come back to the group and inform us, to teach us, to tell us, become the elder, to give us that. So we may be so lucky to experience life without all of the pain and suffering that maybe you've taught us to avoid and things like that. There is ways to pay it forward. And that's how we populate luck to keep paying forward to us in our lives. So <laughs> we're here to celebrate. I'm here to celebrate you. If you have a pen and paper right now, I would like you to, <clears throat> now we're going to go into basically a state of your feminine. I'm going to pull you into your feminine brain if I can. So I want you to actually pick up your writing utensil with your left hand or your writing hand. And I want you to free write or free draw something totally free, totally free. I want you to scribble something with your left hand because that's your feminine side. Okay your feminine side. I want you to draw and scribble and scrap or write, even if it's your left is your dominant, write whatever, a note right now in this break, write something, let luck kind of spray through your body and see what comes up right now as I'm talking. Okay. Don't scribble too long, but you know, okay. So we're, we're scribbling something, we're scribbling something and close your eyes now. And I want you just to think again, I am lucky. Okay, and I want you to open your eyes and look at what you've scribbled down. Look at what you've created. I want you to notice if there's any symbol that showed up that's making you go, oh, wow, that, that happened. Luckily, that just populated for me scribbling. How lucky of that. I'm going to look that up later. Write a note. Make a note of it. You know, jot a note down next to this random symbol or something you may have drawn. If there's an area that you were drawing that has a lot of density, that like you put a lot of work into that area, I want you to focus on that area now and ask it what it wants. And it may want whatever thing that's bothering you to finally freaking stop. Because that's a statement, that's a statement of frustration. That's your nervous system getting some angst out. And what is that thing that you wanted to stop? Do you need a little bit of luck maybe? Do you need to open your mind? Everything that you've been trying in your life, those solutions, have they been working for you? And maybe not, maybe that's why you're frustrated. So if you saw a symbol or you've got a message of what's frustrating you through that exercise just now, let take that with you. Take that as like a part of this workshop, okay? Take that with you for your homework. Um, I'm going to keep going now and pulling the energy and pulling the energy through. We're thinking we're going to ponder for a second. We're pondering that thing that we need luck. We need a change of luck about. We need a change of energy about. 
What is that thing? What is that thing? Now, do you notice how there's a lot of tension? There's a lot of stagnancy. There's a lot of er, density, perhaps like a little scribbled ball, you know, that density. I want you just to take your hands in front of you and just kind of let it, let it open up, let it open up, let it open up, push it out, push it out, push it out. Let that air out, let it air out, let it air out. And we can say out loud, I am open to receiving luck about this situation. I'm open to receiving new solutions. I'm open to feeling lucky to receive new solutions about this. I'm open to feeling lucky about the solutions that will populate for this. I'm open to feeling lucky, luckier than I've ever felt in my life. I'm open to new levels of luck, new miracles, new mind-blowingly beneficial experiences to enter into my life. I am open to that. And if you want to add to that, I'm willing to write these things down. I'm willing to pay it forward. I'm willing to record. I'm willing to recount these miracles that have happened in my life. These moments of extreme luck that have changed me, that have brought me into deeper levels of faith, that have made me smile and laugh hysterically. These moments in my life are true gems and true gifts of creation, the true moments of living that I would like to pay forward. And in doing so, it's going to populate more luck in my life and it's going to populate luck in other people's lives. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to make a commitment to creating something visible for other people in my world. If you have to make a shirt, if you have to make a poster, if you have to make a pamphlet, if you have to have a booth and event, if you have to have a rave sign that says this thing on it, whatever it is, but share the miracles that have happened to you. Share what potentials of luck are out there for people you know near death experiences is another wonderful time where luck really anchors into someone's body like the fact that we are so lucky just to walk and talk and age the fact that you are the age that you are is also a miracle <laughs> and is in a way an example of your own luck and your own plan working out, you know, the preparation that you did as a soul, meeting the opportunity to, to incarnate in this place at this time, to experience it and to co-create co with it, to make the next. Mm -hmm. That is luck. That is, that is a different sense, I would say, of this preparation, meeting opportunity sort of vibration. And cheerleading other people pushes them beyond their doubts because people will fake it till they make it. They will say they're super lucky, make an infographic, 10 of them, make a, make a hundred meme stacks about how lucky they are. But if they don't believe it, they're basically just hoping for validation when they're making this content, give being like luck, validate me, <laughs> luck, validate me. And bring me into what I want. And you're giving your power away. So we are here to push people beyond their doubts by helping being those cheerleaders in their life because their wins are our wins. And in doing so, you will get lost in your service to others, get lost in your making love to the community and be cheerleading them on and then boom something lucky will happen to you that paying it forward all of a sudden someone's going to turn around and hand you something because it feels good for them and that energy you just created those patterns of constantly turning and giving praise and giving support and mutually enjoying the luck and the winds of our family, of our soul family, then that energy is just going to come meet you again. And before you know it, you won't doubt that it's going to come meeting you. Maybe when you're building this behavioral pattern 
of from being a complete, you know, service to self person and taking everything to being a service to other person and giving, giving even when you know, you know, when you're not sure how it's going to turn out. Like I volunteered at so many events. I've been behind the scene of creating so many events and, and, and conferences and workshops and meetups and stuff with my friends. Cause I'm that mutual cheerleader and amazing things that and other lucky, awesome things happened to me because I knew it would. I knew it would. And I knew that I felt guided and lucky to support people in this way and cheerleading them this way. And other people turned around and felt lucky supporting me in this way. And it just, it just paid it on that, that, that communal energy of that fourth density collective consciousness of our planet that is coming online. That's really a really fun part of all of this and why I'm making this workshop today and why I do what I do is because I know the luck and how it works is like you create this beautiful thing with true innocence and with true expectations that this thing is going to have a life beyond what I know it's going to be. I can't control it. And I want to just give it the best of my love and the best codes that I can with a theme (laughs) <laughs> and send it out there in the universe and then see what luck is going to come back for me, what sort of inspiration, what sort of goodies, whatever it is, is going to come back. Also, what comes back is the trauma and the <laughs> the shadow work and this pain and the suffering that I had been pushing away through my service to others, martyrdom, and sh- that's going to come back to get reintegrated. So the luck and the love that you're giving people is even more pure, is even coming from an even more grounded, mature, supportive, reliable place. And that's what I really want to cultivate as a person and what I've been working to cultivate as a group and how to basically drown situations in your love and in that understanding of it's going to work out. It's going to work out in our favor you know, the, the universe is conspiring in our favor and it opens my mind. It opens me up to see smiles. It opens me up for people to hand me goodies. It opens me up for people to sing or say something super spontaneously amazing. And it just makes things amazing and makes the world seem like it is a conversation and it's not just a one-sided isolated experience so where I use my memes and my channel and this workshop and my energy as a entrepreneur of Essential Diaries promoting my my sessions where I do card readings and I do psychic medium ancestral galactic work with people those are real services that I really offer <laughs> and I really care and I really love my job. And then the other services is creating memes or sharing memes of psychological and therapeutic support of astrological education, astronomical education, space weather education, education in general, uh, societal education, sociology, psychology, uh, literal child education, um, writing, art, music, all these skills and things that I'm constantly creating and trying to create this like vibe of this constant, you know, festival tent that you can constantly visit and know consistently for the most part, what the vibe's going to be like. That's what I've set up digitally. I'm setting it up physically the best that I can, you know, Um, as I age, it'll get easier to become more in the physical. Right now, I feel like I'm really digitally uh, exploding and sharing and being a lighthouse digitally for the young, younger generations. Also for people in their twenties, as much as people in their thirties and forties have molded and changed and work with me, i am been coded to deal with people who are youthful, either their inner child, anyone's inner child, but then the youth who are coming into their adulthood. That's what I'm here for a lot of it. And youthful adults that relate to me are constantly schooling me, are constantly giving me feedback about you should be this way, do it this way, Um, access more of who we see you as you are, like remember yourself, access your power more. We hate to see you struggling, like step up and I'm turning around and being like, yes, you're right, older brothers and sisters, like 
Yes. And you're right. I do have my power. I am lucky. I am always in joy. I do have my art. I do have my power and I'm continuing to serve while I process my own karma and turn around and be an older sister to literally my own family members and a whole bunch of other people who are following my work, who a lot of them haven't even stepped up and said hi to me yet, who've reached out to me yet because they are so, they're still preparing for this next stage. It's people ahead of me and people older than me and my elders all think it's so easy because they've moved through it, but I'm just fresh out of a Saturn return, still kind of in the ending of it, watching people go into theirs and learning psychology and astrology and all of the space weather cycles and these major themes that are taught in the witch, witching world and the occult worlds and all this crap because they're the truth and they've just tried to keep them somewhere and things got weird because truth made things hard to control so cosmic law can't be denied but it seems to be able to be denied a little bit but that's where the luck comes in because that's sort of like the law it's like the law of luck it's like luck is always a potential luck you always have to account for luck you always have to account for luck, no matter what. You could be in the worst boss battle with the scariest Sith Lord, which I have been experiencing on many levels <laughs> the last month, this sort of energy. And there's no, you know, there's Orion is up in the sky. Like it's staring at me. I'm watching the Star Wars movies. Like <laughs> I'm watching these battles for galactic humanity happen and be and re-watching how they've implanted this into our society already and how it's really happening and in all these scenes and in all these movies with the hero the hero's journey and the archetypes what comes in for these heroes every time some sort of luck some sort of spark that the universe does favor life does favor those fighting for life does favor those seeking the light and life to be prolonged and be preserved. It seems like that's the favor that things go. That's been the, the, the overall truth. And so when you're really feeling like you're not sure what to do and you really need that moment, people go to prayer, they get pushed into praying to God, source creator, please, you know, illuminate for me, the clarity for this experience, please, or thank you. It's more so instead of saying please and begging, we have to say thank you and receive it. Thank you for showing me luck. Thank you for showing me what to do next. Thank you for having patience with me. Thank you for having grace with me. Thank you for showing me the depths that people are carrying their darkness and showing me the heights of their light. Thank you for showing me how to love others, all encompassing and experience their wins and truly feel joy for them, truly feel a mutual win when my brothers and sisters, no matter how tormented they've been or what they've been through, when you see them actively then get luck, then win. When they're starting to choose good, when they're trying, starting to choose love, when they're starting to choose patience, when they're starting to humble themselves and they start to see things working out for them and you start seeing wins actually happen in their life. You and me, we've seen this. We've seen someone go into a hole, curse the whole world. And one of us have had to be their angel in that moment being like, don't give up. We were their luck in that moment. We were the luck that they needed. We felt compelled to talk to them, smile at them. We were their luck. The luck just bounced out of our body to meet them. They were the magnet to it. And we, it just shot out of us, whatever it is. We don't have to think about it. Luck is just being distributed all the time. And I hope to God that the luck in your life, it's tenfold expressed that you feel on top of the world lucky and on top of the world in a humble, humble place where you know that it is not because of you, but it is because you've become in the, in the resonance with luck. You have gone back to the flow. 
You have found the flow of the divine will and you are going with it. There is no resistance. There's no plotting. That is a place where I'm trying to bring myself to all the time and bring people back to. And I think that's a gift. Drowning my reality with my love and with my joy and with my creative flow is who I am, is my truth, is going to be lucky for somebody. I make memes and artwork and all this, and I post at all times of night, all the time now, because I know it's lucky. It's like the timing is real and I'm just falling into it. I'm thinking less and I'm doing more in the flow. And I know that someone's going to see that across the world or at the, my neighbor at 4 a.m. See that one meme and laugh. See that one solar flare post and laugh or be shocked or be aware. And it's going to change them. It's going to shift their vibration, make them feel supported, make them feel loved, make them feel a part of it, make them not feel alienated, make them feel a part of it. And I think that's what luck makes us feel. It makes us feel a part of the whole divine dance. And there's a song that came through that is, I didn't look up the name of it, but it's the, the, the lyric is cover me in sunshine. And there's more to the lyric obviously, but it's just saying over and over, like with your overwhelming love and your creative love that just you're, you may want to hold it back. Cause you're like, Oh, people, some people might not like this that I care about, but it's like some people sure, but everybody are you going to withhold your energy from people who are trying to control who you are or are you going to give your love to those who have learned how to be accepting who have learned ho'oponopono who have learned how to forgive who've learned that life is about genetic mutations about mutations about constantly changing moving on growing it's about humility again, like thinking that you know everything, thinking that you could never be wrong, thinking that your opinion is the best. If you're not living 100% bliss, then your opinions and your, your I would say, unsolicited advice is not going to hit. It's not going to work. But if you show people how lucky you are, they're going to listen. There's nothing you have to do. Wow, so lucky and manifested a whole motorhome like that? Yeah, I am that lucky. I am that lucky. I'm, I'm going to manifest it so good and so amazingly that you're going to be like shocked, but shocked and then reminded, shocked and then maybe even jealous, shocked like, I want to do that. I can do that. And I'll look, turn to you and be like, hell yeah, you could do that. I cheerlead you to the end and back. Let us do a manifestation moment right now. Let us. Let us focus in on what is it that your heart desires? What is it that you want? Let's get you that. Let's let's build off of this luck. Have some of my luck. Sprinkle the fairy, the fairy dust on them. Their wins are your wins. I've got a win. You think it's a win. I want you to win. Let's win. Like, let's get a win going. Like, what's the next win? Like, let's keep the win streak going. That's sort of the energy that I'm trying to instill in covering us in sunshine covering people in that sunshine of your light, of your joy, of your wins, of your luck, that's only going to come back to you. That's only going to elevate the whole collective humani humanity vibration. We, It's got a lot of crap to shake off. You know, you'll know when you've oversweetened the thing, like if it still needs sweetness, if there's still people out there extremely depressed and doom scrolling on social media for a glimpse of hope that their their soul is going to have something. I'm there for them. I'm there for that. I'm there for bringing that luck and that joy and that light, that sunshine. You know, your doom scrolling on your phone means maybe you haven't gone out in the sun, but I will go out in the sun first and then bring back all my brilliant ideas, all of the synchronicities that I've had, and I will bring them back to this realm, this online realm and create art and light and pathways to community, pathways to fun. Just keep working that and create winning, create the luck. So this is also in a way now we're touching sort of on the Tantra of life in a way. And I am not versed in this. I'm not in this life. 
I have not read a book to completion. I have not taken a class to completion. I have not been initiated in any, anything like I'm a very much clean slate. I've been able, my soul all my life has been like, mm, mm, skirt the weirdos, skirt, skirt the nonsense. We don't want to do that this life. We're opening at the doors. We're breaking through the glass ceilings. That's what I'm here for. We're breaking through all the glass ceilings and <clears throat> Tantra is basically just the enjoyment of being alive, being fully embodied, being creation, embodied, and understanding the timing of everything, understanding the purpose of everything. So you're not lost. You're in the know. You are the director of the film. You know, you are the producer. You are the actor. You are the the lighting guy like you're doing all of it you are seeing how it's all working out the play of your life that is sort of that tantric experience that i understand it and the pleasure of hesitation and the pleasure pleasure of innovation is sort of what's coming through with this luck also so to bring about this luck or you think that luck is about to favor you, but there's this preparation needed like, oh, I think I might get lucky if I go to this location at this time for this activity. I feel like something cool is going to happen for me. I feel this excitement within, right? But you know, you have to wait till tomorrow for that thing to happen. So there is this, this anticipation of this satisfaction and whether it happens or not that expectation is the test like don't have any expectations but being open to the potential that you were premonitioning or you heard the director or the the producer reading the lines of what's the next scene in your life and you're like oh shoot i feel like i gotta go do this thing tomorrow i'm really excited about it just listen to those things. Don't go in with expectations. Go in with an open heart for luck to be show up for you, whatever way. And that hesitation from not going to that thing now because nobody's there, but withholding and like cultivating your energy to show up to that thing. That is the tantra of life also. And you may show up to this experience, right? That you've been hesitating to engage in until you knew it was time to go. And you go to do this experience and there is, you know, you've gone in open-minded. You don't have any expectations. You're just showing up. We're just showing up and whatever comes to you, a fly lands on your face. Okay. Me and the fly right now, right here, right now. This is it. Somebody calls your name. Oh, this person's calling me right here, right now. This is the next thing going from thing to thing to thing. And then in those moments, those are moments where innovation can happen, where luck can happen, but innovation can happen. And that is also the tantra of life is where you find those moments where we can innovate something new, where we can build something fresh, where we can take this, this unknown energy of a situation and innovate it into something that universe creation's literally never done before. But that's what we're here to do is literally make stuff that's never happened before based off of all of the conditional uh, things weighing on us. So when it comes to luck, finally, before I get into one more written ex exercise, we've done really good. Thank you for this workshop time. You guys have been wonderful. We're going to talk after this workshop also for those of you who are here for the, the, the recording here on the Zoom call. Stay and we're going to talk after. And those of you watching the recording, I appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing, liking, hitting notifications. Comments are huge. And let us continue. I'll see you on next 18th, April 18th. But for this luck to continue, I must give you the final note here, which is a term that they give everybody when they start doing improv classes. And it's a term, yes, and. So yes, and your life, yes, and the situations, yes, and the luck, yes, and whatever is coming into you and spin it in a way where you can celebrate it, spin it in a way where it's a mutual win, see it as a mutual win because they're, you know, everything in their reality is you. So Yes, and it into a silver lining. Yes, and it into something funny. Yes, and it into seeing the true luck 
the true gem of luck that happened in that moment, the odds of something like that happening. Yes, and it's a miracle. So that was... That was what we channeled for this month's luck frequency. And it was an honor as always to share on my diary with all of you. I've met a ton of people through doing interviews, through going to places, and I continue to do those interviews. I continue to go to these places. I'm now realizing expanding even more so into my gifts and into what my template is here to help with based off of what I look like, even based off of what I, what my behaviors are, my mannerisms, where I fit in and where I'm received. Well, I'm seeing that I'm seeing where souls are literally calling, beckoning for help in my reality from my past. Like, I from the soul work and the grid work I've been doing over the last five years, there is stuff from the old grid points and people from old grid points that who I thought were maybe even lost to the Borg who had been treated and, you know, took the knee, which for me is kind of like, can't hang, can't trust somebody who takes the knee. I need to be around people I can trust children with who, who understand how the earth and this world and reality can be lucky for them. They can work out no matter what situation, like I said, fighting the most difficult, the most difficult thing, there's always some sort of lucky opportunity that you can never even fathom, that you can never even predict that could come in and just step right in and interrupt the situation. So just leave yourself open to that magic so it can continue to be there for you and step in for you when you need, when you're in those moments of distress, when you really do need a piece of luck, open that up, open up your heart to that. Open up your heart to receiving that. If you need to start tapping on your chest, open up your heart chakra, open up, smack on it as hard as you can. Get the energy moving in your chest. The heart chakra believes in luck. The green energy is real. And this abundance, like ugh, even just watching a little sprout grow through the cracks of a sidewalk, like that is a moment where luck like one little seed somehow blew itself into that one little bit of soil and it just had enough to completely populate a whole life form. Luck is populating life forms all over the place. Luck is populating stuff everywhere. <laughs> and we are one of those things that got populated through a lucky opportunity. So we have to own that. We have to enjoy that. We have to embody that and be the priests and priestesses of this planet, the kings and queens of this planet, the gardeners of this Eden, and know how lucky we are to be here, how lucky that anything grows, how lucky that things are keeping to grow, how lucky that we can somehow still smile while there's Sith lords like trying to hook and fish our men, women, and children, especially the men, into like ponds, like ponds of thought that is totally self-destructive like removing genetic material and trying to coerce and hide genetics and our whole planetary trajectory into chaos but luck is still just always there just like ruining the plants like just popping holes and um having birds come and lift up a fish out of that pond and drop it back into a river or like <laughs> who knows like Nature is, you can't stop it. So why fight it? Let's just celebrate it. Let's celebrate seeing it in our lives. Let's see it, celebrate it working through our lives. Do it with me and enjoy it with me. <laughs> Show me moments where luck really worked out for you, where you felt so lucky and you're like, dang. And now watching this, you're going to think about me, which makes me feel lucky. Like you're going to, something lucky is going to happen to you after watching this video. And you might think about me. That's incredibly lucky. Like I feel incredibly honored that I could make a positive impact on anyone to the point where they think about me when they think about luck or think about me when they think about the sun, like that has happened. They think about me when they think about where they see a frog. I've just naturally <laughs> become this other sort of archetypal thing in people's lives, this magical creature almost 
And I want, you are, are that magical, lucky creature in people's lives. And you mirror me, you vibe with me because you have these same traits and tendencies. And so be that lucky, magical, mystical, amazing cheerleader of life and post what you feel like you need to, when you need to connect. Uh, even if no one likes it, guess what? People are still scrolling past and seeing it. Even the AI, even even those controllers and those people trying to control, you're still giving them this information. You're still loving on them, celebrating them. It's a mutual win. It's a mutual win. We're mutually winning. So thank you all so very much for the mutual win of this moment that we collected and captured today, March 18th, 2023 you know, 9 a.m. Pacific time until 10, 24 a.m. We did an hour and a half here lecturing in this workshop. That's about how long they go. If you'd like to watch any of the old workshops, there's a playlist on my YouTube. It's Guardian Training Workshops. Also, if you just go to my Patreon, like I mentioned, patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries, and you sign up for my Guardian Training pledge or tier, all of the articles in there are also the replays. So you can go through there if you would prefer to go through my private stuff and you don't like YouTube or whatever. And those of you who know my YouTube very well, please go enjoy those, those, those playlists and get the other codes if you want. Watch how I've already grown and kind of built sort of some sort of archetype and architecture of what these workshops are, what they kind of look like, how they kind of feel. And <laughs> we're also going to be premiering this eventually. You may be watching this as a premiere. Thank you again for those of you who've considered joining my work who maybe can and haven't yet. So please go to my Patreon at any amount so you can join still because I still send this stuff to those people. If you can't join the Guardian tier, which is a $40 tier, then join at any amount, please please at any amount and you will still be getting the data. You'll be getting space weather updates, all my updates. You'll be getting the Ascension Diaries stuff. Me as my personal business and brand, you'll be getting what I know that you need if you truly want to be invested in me and my work and eventually come to our events and do things in the future with us, which is rapidly building this year in unexpected ways, but I'm just going to go with it. You know, the call to action is was much bigger and more intense than I realized. And there is a lot of souls, like I said, from old grid points, old things that I've done that are calling me back and asking for more, like, help me, <laughs> you know, help lift me, lift my vibration out, match me, match my vibration so I can remember who I am when I'm with you. Remember who I am, who I was when I was with you. Who was that? Who do I want to be? I'm here to be that mirror too for whoever needs it as your sister, you know, as your fellow priestess or Oracle here in garden of Eden, I'm happy to do my service. I would wear a nun's outfit and be like a service to others, like being, if there's an outfit for that, I've thought about it, but this life is so much more than that. We have to integrate all of the darkness and experience it and integrate all the darkness and all of the light and become this like and off the gray sort of like walking middle path libraries of the universe and what is po what is possible and then like creating safeguards and schools and tools to make sure that we're constantly not forgetting these archetypes these dangers the dark and the light and techniques on how to walk that middle path on how pleasurable it is to fall into that frequency of luck and of in the flow, just showing up and being service to others and having that really pay off. These things really happen. This really works. The physics of all this really works. I'm a living, breathing example of it. I wouldn't teach this if I didn't think it worked, but truly these workshops and everything I'm giving you is coming from my wins. And I want to share my wins with you the best I can, the best I know how. This is how I'm doing it for now. I encourage you to do it your way. And I'm happy to take criticism also if you have concerns or comments. Obviously, just do it out of love as your wins are my wins. My wins are your wins. Let's just make this an even more of a winning container. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to keep growing up and aging and trying my luck with aging into an older, more riper elder and keep getting better. So yeah, thank you all so much for these workshop opportunities. I love and care for you so deeply. Everyone who's followed my works, who's seeing this video, you're awesome. 
I only want to spend more time with you, collaborate with you more. So heed, heed what I'm saying, listen to how to sign up for me and what I'm doing. I try and make it super easy so we can just have fun. Okay. Okay. I want you to just tap on the top of your head a little bit, just the finale, just being like, I am luck. I am lucky. And I am very happy with how this workshop went. <laughs> I am supported, I am loved, and I am open to learn even more for the future. I am, and I'm open to applying this information. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Thank you all. And I will see you on the next workshop and all the other random stuff that I do until next 18th.